Hello, and welcome to Film Slam Streams Post Film Conversation for Youth versus Gov. My name is Eric Seiler. I'm a professor of film, media arts, and communications, as well as moderator of this conversation. We are very pleased to be joined by the producer and the director and the director and subjects from the film. We have the director of the film, Christy Cooper, joining us. Hello, Christy, and welcome. Hi, Eric. Hi, community. Thanks for having us. We also have a producer from the film, Olivia Arman, Aman, joining us. Hello, Olivia, and welcome. Hi, Eric. It's nice to be here. Great to have you. And we have two subjects for the film you'll probably recognize. We have Levi Andrehan. Hello, Levi, and welcome. Oh, thank you for giving us this opportunity. You're quite welcome. And last but not least, we have Jaden, who is another subject in the film. Hello, Jaden, and welcome. Hi, thank you for having us today. It's great to have all of you. So let's get right into this. There's so much to uh, unpack here with this film. The film is not over with yet. I need to remind you because this is still going on. I understand, Christy, that you know, you're going to um, write this out until the end, but let's go back to the origins of it. How did you get connected and involved with this project? Sure, so back in 2011, uh, the organization, so Julia Olson, who everyone saw in the film, she's the lead attorney who's um, representing these youth. She formed her organization called Our Children's Trust in 2010 with the goal of representing young people in climate litigations. And so in 2011, she filed legal um, proceedings in every state across the country on Mother's Day. And I joined a project together with WITNESS, which is a social justice human rights organization based out of New York, to create a series of 10 short films that were featuring some of these young people. Um, two of them, well, three of them actually, Kelsey Juliana, who's the now the lead, the named plaintiff on this case. She was a state plaintiff for the state of Oregon at the time. And Shutesca Martinez um, was a Colorado state plaintiff and Jamie Lynn Butler was an Oregon state plaintiff. And they were all in these short films that I did. <clears throat> and so that was kind of my introduction to working with this group of young people and you know, working with using the law and film to kind of drive climate justice. And in 2015, when this group filed this lawsuit, I was you know, already friends with some of them and with some of the families and knew the legal team. And so when they had their first win in the spring of 2016, I was very nicely poised to kind of jump into the story and approach Julia at that time and asked her if she would give me exclusive access to, to follow the story. And then I've been, now I've been on this journey with Levi and Jaden and the rest of the plaintiffs since then. Well, well, wonderful. It's a, it's a, a long journey. I guess you didn't realize uh, when you originally signed up for this. I think <laughs> the plaintiffs could say the same. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Olivia, um, tell us how you got involved with this project. I joined Christy on the project um, about two and a half years ago. Um, she and I had run into each other a couple of times over the years when she was gathering some evidence for the case. Um, I was working with a photographer named James Baylog who um, does time-lapse photography on glaciers around the world and watches them um, uh, disappearing. So Christy was in our office um, gathering some visuals from James's uh, work. And then it was probably about a year after that, that um, mutual um, uh, uh, friends of her film and friends of the films I had worked on connected us and said, I had just come off a project and Christy um, needed some additional producing help. And I was really, um, really excited to work with her. I loved this story, um, looking at climate change from, um, uh, the point of view of a legal case and it uh, and these young people and looking at it through their journey and through the eyes of really taking um, their futures into their own hands was um, really exciting to me and I've been really happy to be part of this project it's been awesome. Well we're great uh, we need you know people like you and Christy to uh, support um, the young people especially in this um, important endeavor. Now, Levi, you got involved with this when you were young. Um, 
seven, eight years old when you got involved with this. Why did you get involved? I mean, this is when you were seven or eight, this is something that grown-ups probably have to worry about. It says, I'm just a kid. Why should I get involved with this? Tell us a little bit about this. Yeah, so um, I decided to get involved with the lawsuit um, when I was very young because when I realized how big of a problem climate change was, um, I knew that I needed to take big action. And I've been going to protests and rallies when I was very little. Um, and that just didn't feel like enough. And I knew that adults uh, hadn't been doing enough because they knew about what uh, that climate change was a threat uh, 50 years ago. And, um, and when knowing that adults knew but didn't seem to care, it, um, it just was really upsetting. And so I knew that I needed to take things in my own hands. And so when I heard about the lawsuit, I knew that it was something that I needed to do because it was what better way to take big action than suing the United States government. <laughs> oh, you're muted. I'm, I'm sorry. Well, what did your parent? <laughs> what did your parents say? Um, here you are. You're part of a lawsuit. Were they encouraging? Were they hesitant? Did they let you make your own decision, Levi? Um, my mom really made me uh, allowed me to make my own decision, and. Um, I could kind of tell that she was, uh, I mean, she's always been supportive of me doing whatever I thought was right um, in like relation to um, climate change or pollution, that type of thing. Um, as long as it wasn't something very dangerous, uh, she allowed me to do it. Um, and so she was very supportive, but also she let me make my own decision. Okay. So how does she feel about it now that you um, made some progress with the lawsuit and maybe it garnered some recognition. Um, what is her response now to you? Um, I know that she's very proud of that I've taken uh, action and I've stuck with the lawsuit because she didn't really expect it to be uh, such a long process and neither did I. Um, and so she was rather surprised that I, I guess she was rather surprised that I stuck with it, but um, she's very, very proud of me. Well, well, she should be because this is um, a good part of your life, probably a third of your life you spent on this. <laughs> uh, well, I would also add, Eric, that, that Levi not only is a plaintiff on this case, but in the midst of all of this, he also joined a lawsuit against the state of Florida as well. He's one of the, the Flor Floridian plaintiffs on a state case. Oh, well, yeah, well, why, why stop at the federal government when you can make an impact, keep, <laughs> keep at it. Now, moving on to you, Jaden, um, you obviously joined this when you're a little bit older. How has this lawsuit impacted and shaped your life? How has it impacted my life and changed my life? Exactly, yes. Um, well, Climate change within itself has always like affected my life because I'm from Southwest Louisiana where we have like um, a whole bunch of natural disasters caused from like coastal erosion and other stuff like that. Like me and myself, I've, uh, I've gone through two floods in my life um, in 2016 when it was supposed to never reach my town. But I feel like this, the way that this um, has really like this case has changed me is I it really made me feel like not alone. Cause being in Louisiana, because it was so oil dependent, there wasn't that many kids that were interested in stuff like this. Being in this case really made me feel like I had, um, like it, it made me feel more hopeful cause it showed that other kids were also thinking about this. So it really made me happy and it really made me like um, really want to keep going. Well, um, I'm, I'm glad that uh, you want to um, keep going. What has the response been because you're a, you know, it's still a teenager and you spent most of your teenage years on this and you've sacrificed things, maybe hanging out with friends or going different places to participate in this. Um, how has this, um, how has the response been amongst your peers that well, for what you're doing? I'm not sure if you could hear me. Were you able to hear the question, Jaden? Well, 
Um, from my peers, it hasn't been so great, especially um, whenever I was younger. I, I had like a lot of backlash from my community because of um, joining this lawsuit. A lot of people thought I was going against people's families because in Louisiana, um, people they're like most of the adult men work in the oil industry so me combating that was like was basically them seen as me saying i don't i want to take your job away from your household when that wasn't it so i had a whole bunch of um like hate thrown my way and a whole bunch of backlash i was actually whenever i joined this case when i was 12 and on my 13th birthday i was actually forced to not be friends with my best friend anymore after her mom had found out that I was a part of this case. Um, she, I invited my friend over to my birthday because it was my 13th. Can you I think we've um, had a connection issue. Um, Jaden, when you rejoin us, um, we're gonna pick back up on that. Um, really interesting. Oh, back to you, Christy. Um, you know, as a documentary filmmaker, you have to make decisions on what to put in the film and what not to put in the film. And, you know, Jada and Levi just shared with us some interesting information. You know, some of it made the film and some of it did it. How did you decide on what to put in and what to leave out? Yeah, it was really tough. It was, they were tough choices. And, um, you know, when we got into post-production, there's obviously a lot of choices that have to be made in terms of what is servicing the story. And um, you only have so many, so much time to tell the story. And of course there's 21 young people um, who are part of this story and each and every one of their stories is important and impactful. Um, but we, you know, we tried, and I also had the whole historical framework and the, the experts who were, you know, guiding us in that part of the story and, and the legal case and being in the courtroom. Um, so it was really, you know, with my team, um, with Olivia and with my two wonderful editors, um, it was really about trying to shape the story in a way that was always advancing the case. Um, so picking those, those, those plaintiff stories and moments in their stories that that worked within the realm of, of how we were trying to move the story forward. So whether it was talking about their harms or talking about what the government has known or talking about you know what the court's decision was and where they possibly might have got it, gotten it wrong, we were able to weave in these plaintiff stories throughout. Right, it, it, exactly. You said the key word advancing you know, mm -hmm. advancing things, that's your job, despite leaving a lot of things out <laughs> as well. Also, Jada, I'm glad we have you back. Um, um, we left you in the middle of your story. You were talking about how you were forced not to be friends with your best friend. You want to just continue with, with what happened there? I'm sorry, my connection is really unstable right now. Um, but basically what I was just saying, I, uh, I, I was friends with this girl for years. I'm not gonna say her name, but I was, friend, I was best friends for, with her for years. We, she would stay over for, at my house for weeks and I invited her over to my birthday, but on the text message back, it, um, it was her mom cussing at my mom saying that my mom was doing a bad job at raising me and saying that I was growing, I was growing up too fast because of, I was in this um, thing and I was in the lawsuit and she didn't want someone, a kid that was growing up too fast to be a bad influence for her daughter. So she would she refused to let her daughter come to my birthday and she refused to let us see each other anytime after that. And so this uh, lawsuit has uh, really been hard for me, honestly. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that, but in just, you know, that just through the documentary experience, you have a lot of support behind you. Yeah. Um, Olivia, um, as a producer, I know you had to schedule a lot of things, find a lot of elements, to help, um, as um, Chrissy said, move the film along. Can you give us a couple of examples of some things you specifically worked on the film to help make it successful? Yeah, um, you know, I was lucky to come on to this project when Christy really had her sort of like arms around the story and she had had such a long running relationship with our Children's Trust, um, the, uh, the nonprofit that um, is the legal entity that or the, the 
are the lawyers behind this case. And she'd formed these really amazing relationships with the plaintiffs and their families. So Chrissy had been carrying this, you know, carrying this load of, um, of the film um, for a long time. I came on and was able to help her raise um, the money to, to, to make the film. Um, Christy had been doing a lot of this on her own and working on some small, um, off some small grants and some fellowships that she had won, but we really had the responsibility of raising the full budget for the film. So I was able to do that. And in all filmmaking, you know, it, it sounds, it's not the most, um, compelling part of a film, but it costs money to make them. And it takes a lot of pressure off um, the creative process. If you know you can move forward um, to hire an editing team, to pay for the film shoots that you need to, um, to, uh, to film, to capture your story. Um, and I also helped her really when I came on a lot of the principal photography was finished and we were moving into post production there were still with a film like this there are always ongoing shoots there are always developments in the case developments in these young plaintiffs lives that you want to capture. So we had the task of simultaneously moving the project from production into post production. Um, as at the same time continuing to gather some story elements that um, would help advance uh, the film. So I helped Christy bring on our fantastic editing team um, and some story consultant, uh, a st story consultant named Steve Hogard who joined us. Um, Gosh, all of the post-production side of it to um, helping find um, composers and uh, graphic artists to work on the film. So doing a lot of that research. And then as a creative team, we'd all decide on who felt like the best, um, the best match for the film. So it's a really, it's a really fun part of the, um, the process too, because you've got all this material. Now the job is to like roll up your sleeves and start putting it together. And when it starts coming together, all those years of work, those four years of filming and being in the field and you start to see what Christy has had in her head and how she envisioned this story coming together, you start putting those pieces in place. And it's a really satisfying part of filmmaking. It definitely is. I just love, because you could have just spent the entire time just following the young people and in and out of court. But you, uh, the whole team does such a great job of um, 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 educating um, the viewers as well too, bringing up um, you know, um, past um, administrations, bringing up um, past court cases, um, um, you know, footage from various news outlets. So it just all came together so seamlessly to help tell the story and move, move it along. And I just like the way you were just presenting facts, not trying to shape our opinion or, or anything. You were just presenting the facts. And I think that was very important, Olivia, for the facts to speak for themselves. You know, one thing I really like about the film too and the decisions as a director that Christy made was, was bringing forth the judicial process too and giving the audience a grounding in what a constitutional lawsuit is and the three elements of standing. I think as Americans, we tend to forget about this very important and equal branch of our government. And so this film lets us as the audience experience um, the judicial system. And that for me was a, a really compelling part of the story as well. Absolutely. Now, Levi, um, in the film, we saw you participating, you know, in, in protests, um, going to court and so forth, but you're a 13 year old um, kid. Well, what do you like to do besides um, being an activist? What are some of the things you do in your life? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I surf, I boogie board, skateboard, uh, ride my uh, bike. I hang out with friends. I'm a competitive sailor. I was actually just at a regatta yesterday. Um, I, I'm, I'm really an outdoors type of kid. Um, I used to play the violin. Uh, I want to start playing it more because I'm a baby sister and I want to be able to play her little lullabies. Um, but yeah, I'm really just an outdoorsy type of kid. I like to run around, um, go on long walks outside. 
that, that that's that's good that's good and in your spare time you you know like to um you know sue the federal government and your state government <laughs> too okay great and um what about you Jaden um as an older older team I know you're still in school what else do you do besides um you know you know participating in this lawsuit So I'm not sure if you can, I can, um, if you, I'll come back to that question, Jaden. Okay. Uh, if we can still um, hear you, but as we wrap up here, let me um, go over to you, Christy, again. Um, what's next for you? Are you working on another project now? I know this is still ongoing. Or are you just taking a break while you're waiting for the next stage in the litigation or are you working on another project? Well, Interestingly enough, it, um, I, I don't know that I necessarily anticipated um, how much work would go into <laughs> the still the film once you're done with it. Um, so we're, you know, just just the festival circuit since November has been really time consuming and it's, you know, it's pretty much a full time job to to keep up with all the festivals and the panels and, you know, coordinating with the plaintiffs and um, and doing that kind of things, but but we've also been working for a year and a half um, together with our partners at Vulcan Productions on uh, strategizing and developing our impact campaign around the film. So we're not only releasing, you know, planning on releasing this film to the public um, as a film, but we're also planning on releasing a um, pretty a pretty broad and substantial impact campaign to accompany it, where where we will be working with communities and young people across the, the country on holding their governments accountable when it comes to the climate crisis. So there's, it, there's been, that's a full-time job, just kind of, you know, the partner discussions and keeping up with all of that and the social media, et cetera, and also following the developments in the case. So on just um, for the audience to understand, even though you kind of see in the film that the, that the case is still ongoing, we, had even a re more recent development just last month that the the plaintiffs filed what's called a motion to amend their complaint um, with the district court with Judge Ann Aiken. Um, and so they, because the Ninth Circuit kind of got hung up in providing the injunctive relief or being able to mandate that the court, that the government implement these climate recovery plans, that's kind of where they they got stuck on the case and didn't feel like the courts could actually address that. The plaintiffs are now focusing on the declaratory part of uh, the relief that they're seeking, which is very similar to um, the Brown versus Board of Education case in 1954, where the very first um, declaration that was made by the courts was a declaratory relief stating that the plaintiffs' uh, constitutional rights had been violated. So these young people are following kind of that similar course with their case, asking the courts to simply state first what the law is. Um, and so there's, you know, trying to keep up with, with all of that and, and figuring out how to, you know, work that into the impact campaign. And the plaintiffs are also right now trying to get a resolution passed with the, the House and the Senate um, that is going to be rolled out on Earth Day. Um, so there's a, you know, a lot of support that we're also trying to provide the plaintiffs on that front and we'll see where the case goes and, you know, what continue, continued filming looks like with that. But for the moment, Olivia and I remain very busy <laughs> with this current project. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. Because this project has so many legs. It can touch people in all walks of life. Um, young people all the way to you know law schools and beyond and general public so you, you can do that and um, I guess Christy as a director you didn't know you were also a, a part-time lawyer as well too <laughs> learning <laughs> all the jargon and so forth. I feel like I went to law school at least for the lingo part. <laughs> Absolutely now Olivia what about you what are you working on another project now, or are you just still dedicated to this project and seeing it through? I'm still dedicated to this project. Christy and I really enjoy working together and, you know, um, having gone through um, 
uh, several feature length documentaries, you always think you're at the finish line when you finish the film, but you're really just halfway through the process. So I, I sort of knew that we would have this longer tale of distribution, getting the film um, out to the world to be seen, as well as engaging and creating a, um, an impact campaign. Um, that had always been um, one of our hopes for the film, that we could take this story and move people into action on the climate crisis and young people in particular. Um, so no, I'm working, I work part-time with Christy. I'm moving my family back from, back to the US from New Zealand. So that takes up a little bit of time in the last weeks of being down here. Um, so we've kind of got a full plate. But well, both Christy and I will look forward later this year to transitioning and developing some new um, film ideas and, and stories. So at, we are filmmakers um, and at some point we'll move on to another, you know, onto another project. Well, great to make a great team by getting this Thank story you. told. Um, so over to you, Jaden. Um, I'm glad you're with us. Are you there, Jaden? Okay, great. So as we was, I was, I was talking to you before, um, what do you do besides, you know, um, participating in the court case, you know, going to protests and being in the courtroom? What else do you like to do? You mean other than activism? Exactly. Or did my connection come out again? No, you're good. No, we, we can, can hear, hear you. you. Can you hear us? Jane? All right. Yeah, now I can hear y'all. Sorry, my my in my I live in a very small town in uh, New Mexico, and when the connection goes out for somebody, the connection goes out in the whole neighborhood. Um, but I, ba so basically just what I've been doing, I've been trying to like draw more. I've been learning how to sew. I enjoy, I really enjoy like, um, taking care of like animals. I have got, I've got like six chickens recently. I have two goats. Um, I have, uh, we now have a big pot of land over here in New Mexico. So I've just been, uh, mostly just taking care of like farm, like my animals and, um, other homely stuff like that. Oh, well, great, great. So what's in the future for you, um, Jaden? Well, what do you um, hope to do as a career? Um, I think what I've been thinking recently is uh, being like an environmental scientist or anything to do with science, honestly. That, that, sounds, that sounds good. I mean, you have experience in um, you know, looking at the environment that's scientific as well. So we wish you the best with that. And last but not least, Levi, what's in your future? What would you like to do when you grow up, as they say, or if you're not growing up already? <laughs> yes. I'm not sure yet, but most likely something in relation to animals. Um, I'm hoping to be able to vault, uh, like, to be a zookeeper or something like that, because I get to work with animals all the time. Well, that sounds that sounds good, but um, Jada and Levi, I'm sure both of you will remain, um, you know, with your activism um, at some point in your life, and hopefully pass it on to the people that you meet and hopefully future generations. <laughs> so, but all of you, um, Christy Cooper, director, uh, Livy Arman, the producer, Levi. Dryheim, another subject, and Jaden as well, the, another subject. Thank you all for taking time out, for joining us and sharing some important information on this project. And I wish you all the very best. Thank you so much, Eric. It's been a real privilege and an honor to be with the Film Slam um, community. And thank you for having all of us on the panel. You're quite welcome. And I'd like to thank you, our studio, our student audience, for joining us for this important and invigorating conversation. For more information about the current 45th Cleveland International Film Festival or any of our upcoming film festivals, please continue to follow us on social media or visit clevelandfilm.org. I'm Eric Seiler. Thank you. <laughs>